welcome to my channel. Do you realize that when a really big problem surfaces, the primary person who should be concerned is the one who has to solve it? Well, when we realize that God is with us, that should bring a lot of comfort because our God is bigger than any problem that we face. We're going to talk about that in today's video. Let's go. lesson review for Sunday, December 22nd. Our lesson title is The Lord is With You. Your publisher may also call it Mary's Praise. My name is Evangelist Waynell Henson and many of you are accustomed to hearing me say that Sunday School Girl of that thatsundayschoolgirl.com. Well that has not changed but I thought we're friends now in this community, so we may as well know each other's names. I actually had a kind of comical moment a few weeks ago at a conference. A lady saw me. She came up to me and she grabbed my name tag. She flipped it over and she says, oh, that's not you. She said, I thought you looked like the lady who does the reviews on YouTube. And I whispered to her, it is me. And so now you have a name, a government name with a face, and you'll start to hear that more often. Before I jump into the lesson, you already know that there are some folks who are new here this week, and I've got to say hello to them and welcome them. So if that is you, hello and welcome. You have just joined the largest cyber community of Sunday school students on the World Wide Web. This is an awesome place to be. We are learning, we are growing, and God is blessing us in just a few days. We are going to hit 25,000 subscribers on this channel. People who are like you, love God, love his word and preparing to be amazing in Sunday school. There'll be four ways that you can engage with this video while you are here. Look down below. You're going to see the word subscribe. It may be a button on your device, but click that word. Please, everybody, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. We're now doing at least two videos a week, and there are some incredible things planned into 2020. I don't want you to miss anything. So the second step is going to be to click that notifications bell. It is a picture of a bell that that will send you an email every time there is content uploaded on this channel. The third thing, I need everybody to do this. It does not cost you a thing to just look down below and click that thumbs up button. That is just a like. It's saying amen. It's good job and encouragement. And it also lets YouTube know about the kinds of content that you enjoy. So it helps in our rankings. Finally, I do welcome you to leave a comment down below if there's been something that's helpful, something you want to share, or if you hear a prompt in the video that you're able to respond to, please do leave a comment down below. We have a wonderful lesson on this week. I'm excited about it. We went through the markup on Markup Monday. If you are not currently in the Markup Monday crew, you are missing it. It is amazing. We get together for about 30 minutes on Monday evening at 7 o'clock Central Time on YouTube Live. We simply show up with our Bibles, with something to write with and something to write on, and we go through the lesson and do a raw reading of the text so that we can plan our personal study guides for the week so that by the time we get to this moment, we've all done our study and this review becomes kind of a validation and not so much a drive by or the cliff's notes for class, but it really is validating the learning. So we're growing in this community. Listen, it is time for us to jump into this lesson. So same rules apply. Look down below. You'll find the link for the TSSG notes. If you click that link, it'll take you to the site so that you can grab those. They're awesome to follow along in this video. They're my personal study notes. But make sure that you've got your Bible, your commentaries, your pens, your handy dandy notebooks because it's time for us to get into this lesson. Our lesson title is The Lord is With You, also called Mary's Praise. The Bible basis is St. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. The Bible truth. Elizabeth and Mary rejoice over the Lord's favor upon the coming births of their sons. Our memory verses are verses 46 and 47. And the lesson aim is that we will survey the things present in Mary's song of praise, value Mary's part in the unfolding story of God's saving work, 
and commit to our roles in furthering God's kingdom. Looking at a calendar, you were not surprised even a little bit that we've left the Old Testament where we've been for the last three weeks, and we're now in the book of St. Luke having a conversation about the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mm -mm. You weren't surprised even a little bit. Why? Because it is the most wonderful time of the year, and not just because of all of the things that are around. Clearly, I love Christmas. I love the decor. I've been to an amazing Christmas production had a fellowship with my church, had a fellowship in home for TSSG, and it has been incredible. I drink my share of hot chocolate and peppermint mochas. Yes, I do. But the season is about so much more than that, and we should bring our focus in and be reminded of the special gift that each one of us receives through Christ Jesus. And this lesson causes us to do that. And one of the things that I ask you for on Markup Monday is something that I mention every time we get into a lesson that seems familiar or a conversation that we have annually. And that's that we never handle these lessons out of a sense of just being familiar with the story. Because I truly believe that every time we handle God's word, every time we open our minds and open ourselves in prayer and ask him to show us something, he can deposit something new. And so especially during the Christmas holiday, I ask God for that. I want to see his word illuminated in a new way, a way that I can apply and certainly to see the depth of the characters and to see them in new ways. So I believe that he's giving us that that same thing this week or that opportunity as we study the story of Mary and her visit to the house of Elizabeth and Zacharias. I also love that we are in the book of St. Luke this week. Luke is a physician. He writes with a lot of detail, but I especially love that he is the writer who brings a lot of prominence to women in scripture. And I am all girl power, all loving the strength that women bring, the wisdom, the way that women move, the way that we think. I love seeing women in scripture. I'm blessed to have a tremendous community of women around me. I believe in the power of women. And so in his writing, we see again the prominence that he brings to women, the um, importance that he brings on the roles of women in scripture. And in this week's lesson, I've already mentioned that we're going to talk about two women, Mary and Elizabeth. They're both very regular, normal women. They're not uh, from any place special. They don't have uh, great no notoriety or prominence. But each one of them is going to be chosen to do a special work in the plan of God. And each one of them will bear sons who will do great things for God. Elizabeth was the mother of John the Baptist. Mary would become the mother of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, we begin our reading, our study in verse 39, but hopefully in your daily readings, you went back and picked up all of chapter one. Uh, I'm going to kind of hit some of the high points because they become important before we can jump in at verse 39, which begins with the word and. When you see the word and, you already know that something was happening before then. So in short, Mary is really on a journey that is filled with all sorts of surprises. I mean, she has had a visit from an angel. She's engaged to a wonderful man whose name is Joseph. And this is the engagement period of these two young people. They were committed to each other during this time, just as if they were legally married. But Joseph has gone off for a period of time to make preparations to receive Mary into his marital home. And while he's gone, Mary receives a visit from an angel. And this angel has big news. It's strange news. It's shocking news that she is going to conceive a child. Well, this concerns Mary. It's really puzzling to her because Joseph is not here. She's not sexually active with any man. In fact, she says, I've never even been with a man. She's saying that I'm a virgin. And how is this even supposed to happen? So she immediately is filled with concern with the news the angel has. But the angel wants to settle Mary down. He affirms to Mary that she doesn't have any reason to fear, that that which will be in her will be placed in her by the Holy Spirit, that she will carry the son of of God. She'll be the mother of the Messiah. The angel even goes on to tell her that you're going to name this male child Jesus because he's going to save his people from their sins. So again, Mary hears this news. 
she's a very young woman. They estimate that she was in her teens when this would have happened, her mid-teens. So to receive all of this information, that's a very big message from an angel. Um, in the production I went to last week, there were angels literally suspended from the ceiling. In my Sunday school class, and I just talked about this, you know, the appearance of angels in scripture and how people respond to angels. And let me just tell you that even in a Christmas production where I knew that everything was theatric, that's kind of interesting to see angels appearing in a dark theater, suspended by cables and singing, even singing glory to God in the highest. It is just quite an experience and so I can only imagine the reality of Mary having se having seen the angel Gabriel and what this moment must have felt like for her but again the angel also tells her that even all those questions that she has the how is this possible and and what's going to happen he also settles her down by telling her that her cousin Elizabeth who is up in age has also conceived a son again all of these things seem like, wow, how is this even remotely possible? But the angel tells Mary that with God, all things are possible. And so as I studied this week's lesson, I really tried to put my imagination into the reality of the story. And I can only imagine the questions that Mary would have had. What will my fiance think? What is Joseph going to think about me? What's he going to say? He would have the right to put her away. In fact, he even thought about putting her away privately. That's not in this text, but we know that if we've read this lesson before, what would her community think? What would the people around her be saying? It's fair to say that this young woman has a lot on her mind. And the angel then leaves her. And when the angel leaves her, she packs quickly and she goes. Again, she's going through. She's got a lot going on. She's got a lot that she has to process. But that's where we enter our lesson, where she's going to the home of her cousin Elizabeth. Now, although it's not printed in our text, you pick this up in your daily reading, that even though Mary has a lot that the angel has given her, in verse 38, she accepts what he said and said, let it be unto me as the Lord has said. So she's now preparing to move on after this moment to her cousin's home. In verses 39 and 40, I group those together. And Mary arose in those days and went to the hill country with haste into a city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. So where is Mary leaving from? She's going somewhere. She's leaving her home area, hometown of Nazareth, a place that's not highly regarded. Remember the question later on, even with Jesus, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? So not a place that was looked highly upon, but she goes to an unnamed city. We don't get a name here. That is in the hill country. I looked at it this way. Sometimes you go to the country when you want to get far away. My grandparents were from the country. So she goes to the country to get away. We'll say again that she's a very young girl, a teenager at this time, and she's traveling alone as a teenager approximately 80 miles away. That's wowing. How does she know how to get there? Maybe it's a journey that she's taken before. But she goes to the home of her older cousin, Zacharias and Elizabeth. Now, it's Elizabeth that's Mary's cousin. We know that she's older because the angel has told us that she's she has conceived a child in her older years. And so biologically, we can just about guess where she would have been in age after what would have been considered childbearing years. And so she goes to this home. Why would she be going there? Again, I tried to give you that context so that you would understand She's carrying a lot. There's a lot that this angel has shared. There's a lot of that's going on in her mind. It would be reasonable that she would go there to connect with someone who could simply understand. Another woman would understand. Another woman would be able to process and even having an older woman, someone that she could trust. But it was also an opportunity for her to celebrate Elizabeth's miracle because she had not otherwise been aware that her cousin was expecting. Here was my aha. Sometimes we need a connection with someone who understands, someone who understands us without judgment and who will give us godly counsel. Elizabeth was a safe environment to Mary and she knew that. Let's talk about Zacharias and Elizabeth. We see that they are country people. They live in the country. Verse five tells us they're de descendants of Aaron. Verse six tells us they are righteous people. 
In verses 8 and 9, we learn that Zacharias is a priest. So note that when she comes in the home, it is the home of Zacharias. She speaks to Elizabeth. What we don't really know is if Zacharias is present, but we know that we don't hear him speak. So even if he were present, why would he not speak? Well, if you read your background, you know that there was a point that Zacharias also received a visit from an angel. And this angel tells him that his wife is going to bear a son that his son would prepare the way for the Messiah. But he did not believe the angel, and he asked the angel for a sign. And because of his unbelief, he was not able to speak for months. So this was during that period that Mary would have come to visit. He was unable to speak. Mary, as a young girl, this is an di interesting distinction from Zacharias. Even as a young girl, she had a level of faith that was different from the priest, different from him in that she accepted what was spoken and we already talked about that in verse 38 now let's look at cousin elizabeth we've discussed her before in previous lessons looking at women who were barren or unable to have children she was one of these women but god has done something miraculous in her life and in her advanced age allowed her to conceive a son so at the point of this text she is pregnant she's been in hiding or in seclusion for five months look at verses 24 and 25 but as the angel said, with God, nothing is impossible. Here was my aha. Mary right now is in a tough situation, but she accepts what the angel has told her. And now in her own way, going to the home of Zacharias and Elizabeth means that she's moving forward. This is definitely a trip that she didn't sign up for, but she doesn't get stuck in her circumstances. She doesn't get stuck in emotion or feeling. She keeps moving. Verse 41, and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now think about Mary. Before we jump into what happens with Elizabeth, remember that Mary has come quite a distance with a lot on her mind. She has to be wondering what's going to happen when I arrive. What am I going to say? What is she going to say? And all along, she's probably trying to think up the right words. And yet we see that when she walks in, there's a salutation that simply means that she says, hello. At least she was able to muster up a hello walking in the door. And then the scripture tells us that at the sound of her cousin's voice, that Elizabeth got excited about what was taking place in and through Mary. Notice at this point that Mary has not done a thing but walk in the door and say hello and her cousin gets excited. Here was an aha. It is an amazing demonstration when women can be excited for each other. It's amazing when people can be excited for each other. But I especially love it when women can celebrate the work of other women without jealousy, without being catty, but to be excited about what God is doing in and for someone this else. This also stuck out for me as I read this passage. At this point, Mary hasn't shared any news at all. She said nothing about an angel, nothing about a baby. And Elizabeth has been a supportive and encouraging environment to Mary. In fact, for whatever Mary thought was going to happen, she gets there and she ends up not having to say or explain anything at all. It made me think about how so often when we're in challenging situations, we're trying to anticipate what will happen and what we'll say and how we'll behave and thinking about what the others will say. But many times the Lord has already gone before us. And that was Mary's experience here. The Lord had already gone before her. I group verses 42 through 45 together. Here we see Elizabeth is lifting and building Mary. She's filled with the spirit and the actions that happen next are not in her control. She's filled with the spirit and she speaks. And that's pretty consistent in scripture. In fact, even in this very passage, if you look at verse 67, later when Zacharias is able to speak, the spirit comes upon Zacharias and he speaks. And his first words too were to bless God. So Elizabeth speaks and what she speaks is a message that is divinely inspired. First, we see that she doesn't speak softly, but the lesson says that she speaks in a loud voice. Again, telling us that it was inspired under the unction of the spirit. She gets excited immediately. She doesn't have to work up to this. She doesn't have to manufacture this. It doesn't have to be that kind of fake girl stuff. She was genuinely and immediately excited for her cousin. And she says, blessed art thou 
Blessed in this context is an adjective. It's the same adjective we see used in the Beatitudes, meaning happy are you, the kind of happiness that can only come from God, the kind of happiness that's present even when life is crazy around you or the situation or circumstances don't seem favorable. You are blessed. Her circumstances don't look great. They don't feel great, but Mary is blessed. She is blessed, and not only does she call Mary blessed, but she recognizes Mary as the mother of her Lord. She says, my Lord. Um, in this moment, those on the outside are probably judging Mary, or they're going to judge Mary. They will likely say that Jesus is illegitimate, but Elizabeth calls this baby. She calls him blessed. And if you look at kind of the writing, Mary is blessed, the baby is blessed. The baby is the second blessing. She knows that the gift of God that is on the inside of Mary will be special. She knows that he's the Messiah. This is also an Old Testament style of blessing where the second mention is actually the true cause of the first blessing. So the baby is blessed, and that's the actual reason that Mary is blessed. Why is she blessed? Because she was chosen to be the one that would carry and bring into the world Messiah the Messiah. She also refers to him as her Lord. And look at the capitalization on Lord, the acknowledgement of his Lordship. She was already willing to submit to him as Lord. Mary also has life spoken to her. Elizabeth speaks life to Mary. There shall be a performance of those things which was spoken to her from the Lord. You are going to live to see that thing performed that God has spoken concerning you. And the baby that's on the inside of Elizabeth responds as well. The baby on the inside of her leaps. The baby is filled with the spirit in the mother's womb as it was prophesied to his father. Look at verse 15 of the same chapter one, that this baby would be filled with the spirit even in his mother's womb. I also noted that the unborn baby experiences joy. There's an unborn baby here. And I know there's a lot of conversation about unborn babies. And here in this lesson text, we see an unborn baby that hears a voice, recognize the voice, recognizes voices and is filled with the spirit and filled with joy. The baby experiences joy from the moment of Mary's greeting. Elizabeth has expressed nothing but excitement and joy. Uh, thank you. Someone mentioned this in the markup Monday. There is no competition between these soon to be mothers. Elizabeth is pregnant herself, but she's able to bless another woman and that woman's child that would be conceived in verses 46 through 48. I grouped those together. This is now the beginning of the worship of Mary. This is her response to Elizabeth's blessing of her. Her um, cousin has blessed her, spoken well of her. And this is the worship of Mary, also called the Magnificat. Mary's response system. Again, I've got to point out, she's on the trip that she did not sign up for. It is what will be anticipated as a difficult time. There's a lot going on. There's a lot for her to figure out. She's got a fiance that she's got to explain some things to. There are going to be people who will talk about her. And in this moment, despite all of that difficulty, her response is worship. Of all of the ways that she could have responded to break down, to give up, she makes a choice to magnify and to rejoice. We see that here in the lesson text. And Mary said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit had rejoiced in God. She makes a declarative statement. She commands her soul and her spirit to magnify and to rejoice. Here was my aha. When life happens, we have a choice in how we respond. We can choose to magnify and choose to rejoice. What does it mean to magnify? It means to make our God bigger than anything else going on, bigger than the situation, bigger than the circumstances. Too often it is our default to rehearse the facts as we see them or to rehearse everything that's wrong instead of keeping our focus on our big God. What does it mean to rejoice? It means to not get lost in your own emotions, but to choose to have joy even in the midst of what's going on. We also learn a bit about how Mary views herself. 
She sees herself as a woman of low estate. She acknowledges, in fact, her own need for a savior. Now, this is interesting because I know that there are traditions that celebrate or worship Mary as the mother of God. But here she acknowledges her need for a savior. Only a sinner has need of a savior. So she has an awareness that she was not perfect. And that's interesting because it would have been quite easy for her to think very highly of herself as being the one chosen by God. But she never speaks of herself as someone to be praised. In fact, God sees her in a way that she doesn't even see herself and chooses her to be part of his plan. I group verses 49 through 53 together. We see the continuation of Mary's praise and her praise focuses on the character of God, his might and his power. It really rehearses his resume, who he is, who he's been down through history, what's documented in his resume. And it also shows his grace. Only a God who is mighty could orchestrate something like this in her life. And she knew that. So she makes God big. She's actually praying scripture here. If you look at 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 1 through 5, lay it next to this passage. You're going to see a similarity in the writing, the rhythm, the cadence in the celebration of who God is. I also need to remind you again that Mary is a teenager doing all of this. A teen in a tough situation on the trip she didn't sign up for with a lot going on and what comes out of her. Scripture begins to flow. I know I hear it said often, you never know what's in a tea bag until you put it in hot water. When we get in hot water, what flows out of us is truly what is on the inside. And on the inside of Mary was the word of God, was his promises. She knew about God. Here was my aha. Young people can learn. They can memorize. They can rehearse. And they can recite God's word. Young people learn lots of things and lyrics to lots of things. They can learn God's word. And again, we need God's word because tough times, it's not a matter of if they're going to find you it's a question of when and when they show up you need the right things on the inside to face what is up ahead verses 54 and 55 again I look at really the depth of Mary to be such a young woman she knows her history she knows the promises that were made to her fathers and even I'm looking at the depth of this woman and understanding the promises of God. I see here really the importance of our children knowing the resume of God, knowing what God has done. If it's in our families, knowing what he's done in the word, but to know and be able to rehearse the resume of God and to know that his promises were not just for that time, but his promises, even Mary says, are forever. This was a wow for me. This means that someone has invested in, someone has put something in to this young woman. Verse 56 wraps us up. Mary stays with Elizabeth and Zacharias three months before returning home. And I thought this was interesting because if you look at verse 31, I believe it is, it says that you shall conceive. When the angel talked to Mary, he didn't say to her, you're pregnant right now. He didn't give her the time frame. He said, you shall conceive. So as we start this text, there is nothing in the text that tells us that she's pregnant when she walks this 80 miles. Nothing tells us that she's pregnant when she gets there. We don't know the exact moment of conception, but we know that it was of the spirit. So we don't know when it happened. And I thought this was really interesting because for three months she stays with her cousin. So at least there would have been someone to observe and witness this time with her and know that she and Joseph had not been tipping around. So again, so much in this lesson, one that is a familiar text, but so much that we can gain from it. I'm going to stop there because I've got a ton of key learnings and then we'll close this out. Here are my key learnings from this week. Mary didn't understand but Gabriel told her that with God, nothing is impossible. Just the same, we may not understand, but that does not limit God's capabilities. We don't even have to understand the why. We don't have to understand the process, but we do have to obey. Next, don't let the surprises in life cause you to freeze up and get stuck in a moment. Remember that Mary was a young woman on a trip that she did not sign up for. 
but you have to accept where you are. She accepted what the angel said, the space that God put her in. But more importantly, she had to keep moving even when things around her were happening in an unexpected way. And that I say to many of us that when life happens, fright or flight, many of us freeze up and we don't move and we don't know how to proceed, but we've got to continue to move, to listen to the voice of the Lord and to be able to move. But don't allow life to freeze you up. Know and understand the value of relationships. In fact, determine who your safe environments are. What is a safe environment? Those are the people that you can go to without judgment, without feeling beat up, knowing that you are going to be loved, you'll be accepted, and that they're going to not tell you just what you want to hear, but they're going to tell you what you need to hear, and their perspective is going to be rooted in love and most most definitely in the word of God. You need people who can remind you of what God's word said. You need people who even when things seem crazy will remind you. Let me be the person today that tells you, you are blessed. You need someone who can help keep that in front of you, that you are blessed. When we face difficult times, we must make God bigger than our issues and choose to find the joy even in our circumstances. Our problems are smaller when we make our God bigger. Next, what God is doing through us is so much more important than what is happening to us. So often we get lost in the situation and the details of it and we miss the growing points. What is it that God wants from our lives? What is he developing in us? What is he building in us? What are we learning about him? And what will others witness as a testimony in our lives? In fact, Mary said that others are going to look at my situation and look at my story down the line and they're going to call me blessed. And there'll be things that we have to walk out and they'll be tough when we do it. But on the backside, others will see the testimony that God has built and they will see the hand of God in us, through us, on us, and they will be blessed by our journeys as well. Going back to the idea of safe environment, I want to ask you, who has your back? Who can you talk to? And I want to know if you're a safe environment to anyone else. Finally, know the importance of getting God's word down on the inside. Preparing for life doesn't happen when you find yourself in that difficult moment. Preparing happens every day when we spend our time in prayer, in devotion, when we spend our time in the face of God so that when life happens, we're like Mary. We're not rehearsing how we feel. We're not rehearsing what others may say, but we're able to rehearse the resume, the character, the nature, the word of God. God is not accountable to our feelings, but he is accountable to his word. And so we've got to be able to rehearse his word back to him. And it's our experiences with God that help us to know who he is and his capabilities in our lives. What is in you is what will come out. So spend that time putting good things inside. Think about it. When you stub your toe, what's the first word that you say? Because what's in you is what's going to come out of you. And in fact, we can learn a lot about others by listening to what goes on and what they talk about in their most difficult times. Listening to Mary, what came out of her was what she knew about God. What came out of her was the scripture. What came out of her was God's resume, his might, his power, his strength, and his grace. This is our lesson for this week. I pray that it was a blessing. And of course, if there was anything that you have in your notes and you want me to add them to my notes, you know, to leave me a note down below in the comments. I do read those and I'll be happy to take some of your material into my class, but I'll give you credit for it on Sunday. Um, for next week, I know that we're approaching a holiday week. I do want to confirm that we will be on Markup Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. That is on YouTube Live. So make sure, again, that you set the notifications bell down below. You'll have a notice that pops up that tells you that I have gone live. And I would love for you to join me and hundreds of other teachers just to preview the lesson for the week as we begin to study God's Word. I'm going to ask you one more time before I sign out. Please click that like button if you haven't already done it. It would really help me out. It really make me feel good. Be a great Christmas gift. All right, everybody have a super fantastic rest of the week. I will see you in Sunday school. Bye, everybody.